How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So yes, Fallout 4 is officially out. Tons of you guys are playing it, I know for a fact, because I've been seeing you all on Steam. I am blah blah blah, I was playing Fallout 4. My copy is delayed. I, I wanted to get the special edition with the Pip-Boy and it sold out in Australia like that, like instantly. So I ordered it from GameStop in America and then they're like, oh, there's a delay now, and oh, we're sending it to your old address, even though you told us five times to change the address. So, my copy is somewhere, you know, between America and Australia, and it's probably going to turn up in, a, you know, some empty apartment. So, I thought, great, I can't do my Fallout video for you guys, so I'm going to do another Fallout video based on Fallout 3, specifically the DLC, The Pit. This is definitely one of my favourite ever DLCs for Fallout 3, and I'm printing from it. Ba ba. The Auto Axe. So in this video I'll be showing you how to rip files from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. So pretty much anything you want from those games and 3D printing them on your printer. So this is going to be a two-part series. In this video I'll be showing you how to rip the actual files and prepare them for printing and then print them. And then in the second video I'll be showing you how to prepare your prints and glue them together and finish them with paint. So they look awesome. And obviously once my copy of Fallout 4 does show up I'll be doing a similar video on how to rip files from that. So stay tuned for that. Alright, so this tutorial is not going to work for Fallout 4, I'm pretty certain they would have changed things by now, but it does work for Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Skyrim, and Oblivion, supposedly. What you're going to need is BSA Browser, which you can download from Nexus Mods. You'll need Nifscope, and you'll need Mesh Mixer, which is my favourite, favourite mesh editing tool. It's completely free, you can download it from Autodesk's 123dapp.com website. You'll also need to use the NetFab cloud service, which is netfab.cloud.net. Um, it's also, it's been bought by Microsoft or something, or they're supporting it. Whatever, it's still free, and you'll need this later on to combine the shells that you've ripped from the files from Fallout. Alright, so fire up the BSA browser, and you want to select Fallout 3, if you're exporting from Fallout 3 and New Vegas, obviously if you're exporting from New Vegas, and go to Open, and then you want to navigate to your Steam apps folder. Steam library, Steam apps. And then you want to navigate to the game you're ripping the files from. For that game of the year. Data. And these are the BSA files that you want to unpack. So we want meshes. And open. And then you pretty much just want to extract everything. Um, so do that. And select a folder. I've already done it, so I'm not going to, because it takes a little while and takes a little space. Because uh, it's unpacking it. But do that, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so in NIFScope, we're going to want to load up our NIF file of the AutoAx. I don't know why there's two types. It might be first and third person, maybe. Um, let's try this one. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So this is the AutoAx. From Fallout, uh, there's a few sort of variations as well, like the Man Opener, which is such a badass weapon. So we'll export this as an OBJ. So File, Export, OBJ. Okay. And you can see I've already already exported it, as well as some other weapons. So we'll just say the yes. Let's call it two. Uh, for that, New Vegas exported. Done. Save. And we're done with NIFScope. So close that. And now we can open it up in Mesh Mixer. So navigate to where you've saved it. Exported. That's the one. And that's... Oh, there's no chain. I think the other one was actually high quality and I exported that last time. So, when in doubt... Yeah, see, higher file size means more detail. When in doubt, maybe export both types. Yeah, there we go. This is the higher detail model. So that's the auto axe. Let's just rotate this around so you can see it easier. And that's the raw model from the game. So, this in its current state wouldn't really be printable. So what we're going to do to this file before we even do anything to it in Mesh Mixer is actually we're going to fire up the NetFab Cloud service and dump our OBJ into that. So we want to grab our file. That was the one. Open. And we're going to use the NetFab Cloud service to combine all of those individual shells and parts because 
they're not really printable at the moment. And this is something you'll find with lots of video game files. They're not actually printable. Straight from the game, you have to do a bit of repairing. So that's done its thing, and now we can download it again. And essentially, that should have fixed and stitched up our file to make it printable. But there's still a little bit of work to do yet. So here's our fixed file. Let's do a quick check to make sure there's no errors under Analysis Inspector. There's a few points of concern, but... Yeah, I'm wondering if it's just going to remove them if we do that. Yeah, it just does. Oh well, um, let's just leave those in and see how it goes. So, first we need to see scaling. So, out of the game, obviously, they're going to be completely non-standard scale, because it's, it's game scale. So, 73 mil high. Um, how big you want to print your auto axe is dependent on how big your print bed is, I suppose. I chose to print it really large and in bits. So I'll show you how I did that. So here's what I ended up with after I scaled and sliced the auto axe. Basically at this size, it's currently 488 mil high, which is pretty big, um, and 200 wide. So 200 wide was my limit as I didn't want to slice it through the middle here. I wanted to slice it across if I could help it because my bed size on the one how duplicator i3 is 200 by 200 by 180 mil high. So that was kind of my in, you know, implied limit. So you can see here it's made up by seven pieces. So the largest one is this. This is the largest piece. And I've sliced it so most of the part doesn't need support. I mean, this little bit here did need a bit of support. It was a bit tricky. But the rest still printed you know, with no issues really. Uh, with the disc as well, if I turn all the parts back on. The disc, I sliced that separately too. So you can see I've just sliced it across here. And that's because you don't want to print this standing up on the print bed. You want to print it lying down flat. A bit like a frisbee. And um, the rest of the parts, you know, I tend to, to print standing up. Like this one printed quite well standing up in that orientation. And then I set them up for printing in Simplify 3D. So here you can see the support material generated. You know, it's not a huge amount, but it's it does need it. You can see here that it's supporting the little pull tag for the, the ice engine um, and total print time for all of these parts was about three days printing during the day yeah so this is the longest at 19 hours the rest are about five to ten each depending on how big some only two hours and yeah I got printing So I chose to use grey PLA for most of the parts. I did use a clear PLA for the blade and I regretted it pretty quickly. It seems to me that clear PLA is, unless it's a very high quality brand, tends to be very brittle. So there you have it. That's how to get your files out of Fallout. So these are the bits I've printed for my auto axe or man opener. So this is how long it's actually going to be. It's going to be about 500 mil long, which is pretty substantial. And it's printed off all in the seven different bits. So yeah, in the next video, as I said, I'll be showing you how to join these bits together finish them professionally so they look awesome and you can't even see the lines and everything and put them on display as a final presentation model. So thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for that one. And as I said, once my copy of Fallout 4 does show up, I'll be doing a similar video on that. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe and just out of interest, this is my 100th video on Maker's Muse, which is nuts. And I'm going to be doing a very special video for the 101, so stay tuned for that too. See you later guys, bye.